harvesting vehicles along either of those fence lines, farm vehicles, trucks, buses? On, on Thursday, well, even on Tuesday and Thursday, there was discussion about farm equipment that they were going to post. It was the campaign that was going to post farm equipment. And one, at one point, it was along the pond side of the stage, and then they were discussing, discussing about putting some farm equipment up above between the, the stage and the AGR building. So there was also a contact that was provided to the campaign about uh, a resource that would be able to provide additional equipment to uh, banners, trailers, um, the same, some of the same equipment that was utilized in the 2020 rally. And so I had put the uh, campaign in contact with this individual. So if they needed additional uh, equipment along that fence line. And then there was also some discussion about, a, like, I think it was like, I guess you would say a jumbotron or something like there was supposed to be a screen of some sort, you know, like blocking that area a little bit better. Uh, Saturday morning when we showed up, I think there was one combine that was between the AGR building and the stage and there was a few additional tractors that was on the opposite side, on the pond side of the uh, farm show there from the stage. And Commander Lentz and, and Mr. Blasco, when Secret Service arrived, did anybody say to you all, well, we're missing some of the stuff we thought was going to be here to block that line of sight? Uh, when I arrived the day of the rally, uh, I actually did not speak to anybody from the Secret Service uh, until I had to make a phone call uh, to the uh, Secret Service specific to a possible threat that the 911 Center received. I thank you. I recognize I've gone over, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Again, I'll just go to thank you for your service, and it is stunning the proximity of that rooftop uh, and all of that property. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dean. Mr. Mallon, uh, Mr. Mallon, you are recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Lieutenant Harold, how long is the academy that you attended to become a Pennsylvania State Trooper? Approximately six months. And uh, in there, during that six months, how much time was spent on personal protection training or providing security at political rallies? Uh, very little. Yeah, if, if not any, right? Right. Uh, would that be the same, uh, Commander Lenz and Officer Blasco? Correct. There's Similar. Okay. My knowledge, not in the police academy. Agent Sullivan, when you went through the uh, academy training, was it six months like it is now? Uh, it, the first school was 12 weeks at Glencoe, Georgia, and the second Secret Service was uh, about 16 weeks. Fair to say that about five to six of those weeks were spent on uh, how to secure uh, perimeters and things like that at uh, political rallies? Yes, it was a, and personal protection. The vast majority was yeah. protective intelligence investigations, protection. Right. And then uh, when you actually went on a protective tour, it's about five or six years. Not, not accurate. Uh, you'd have to be an agent for at least five or six years before you could be assigned to protective detail. Right, but a protective tour is lasts about five years or so. No, when I was an agent, it was between three and four years. Okay, it's a five. It's about five years now. Or, or more, yes, sir. So fair to say, I think we've established that the experts in protection are the Secret Service and not local law enforcement. You do a lot of, uh, a lot of other things. To illustrate for the American people the abject historical failure of the Secret Service, because they're supposed to be the premier protective agency in the world, and on July 13th, they were anything but. And Helen Comparatory doesn't have a husband because of that. So when I visited the Butler, uh, farm, the, the, the Butler Farm Show and the AGR complex, two things struck me. The absolute, so the, the proximity of the AGR building to where the stage was where President Trump was speaking. And also, when you're on the other side of that very limp chain link fence, how much, I, I, I'm shocked at how many people were milling about that didn't go through any magnetometers or any security checks. Officer Blasco, do you have any idea how many people were on the grounds that day on, on the AGR uh, On the property? AGR complex? Yeah. Uh, from talking to the sniper units uh, in the AGR building, they said there was approximately 150 to 200 people. Okay, so there were hundreds there. All right. And, and that's, it's, so, let me ask you this. Is the AGR uh, property, it's outside the security perimeter, but there were hundreds of people 50 yards closer to the president than the shooter. We didn't know who they were. Uh, what's the high, Commander Lentz, what's the highest structure in the direct proximity of the uh, AGR building? The, the roof of the second floor of the AGR complex. But, but, but in the, the, water, the water tower. In the water tower, yes. The highest one. Did the uh, Secret Service 
ask you all to post anybody up on the water tower? No, they did not. Okay. Would that have helped perhaps secure the area and mitigate the threat of the AGR building if we had somebody up there? I think it would help secure the AGR complex. Because you had a clear line of sight on it if somebody was up there, right? Correct. Yeah. But they didn't do that, did they? They did not. All right. Uh, Commander Lenz, as far as the walkthroughs, did, do, uh, did the Secret Service perform a walkthrough with you all? They did. They did? On uh, Thursday, there was a police walkthrough. Okay. And, and during that walkthrough, did they uh, help you and advise you as to how to secure the AGR building? They did not. They did not. Lieutenant Harold? Our, our walkthrough was Thursday, and AGR building was not discussed. They wouldn't, they did, wouldn't discussed? Yeah, we were inside the fence line of the farm show, and, and we, we picked our, or they picked their stationary post where they wanted troopers assigned within the perimeter, and the AGR building was never discussed. Okay, so we could have surrounded that building with, say, eight or ten officers, and it probably would have mitigated the threat the AGR building presented. Fair to say? Yes. And the Secret Service didn't ask you to do that? No. Okay. How about just clearing the area entirely? It's about 17 acres, but only about four or five of those acres have line of sight to where the president was speaking. Did they ask you to maybe put up some stakes around the perimeter, police tape, no trespassing? They asked Nothing. you to do that? No, I knew AGR. I knew the parking was restricted that day. The, the business was not going to allow parking, but there was nothing, no other communication regarding the AGR. If the property, if the AGR property had been cleared with police tape and some, you know, don't trespass and nobody other than law enforcement walking about, would that have helped secure the area and mitigate the threat of the AGR building present? No, it would have, but like I know that they, they were going to sweep the farm show, so I'm not sure if that area was swept by Secret Service or not. I'm, I have no knowledge of that. We know that there were hundreds of people that didn't go through any security checks that were milling about on that property that day. Outside Could have presented defense, a great correct. threat, and we just got lucky in that regard. Yes, sir. Um, do you think that... Um, I'd say, Lieutenant Harold, again, were law enforcement stationed on the roof of the AGR building? Did the, did, did the, did she, did the Secret Service ask you to put people on the roof? P, PSP was not asked to put anybody okay. on the roof of the AGR building. Commander Lenz, were you asked to put anybody on the roof? We were not. Uh, Officer Blasco? No. No. But if there had been law enforcement on the roof, probably wouldn't have had a shooter on the roof. Fair to say? True. Yeah. How about uh, drones? Uh, Agent Sullivan, to the best of your knowledge, were drones deployed that day to help mitigate the threat that the AGR complex presented? Mr. Fallon, having not been there, uh, it's my understanding they weren't. The Secret Service had, had, had uh, some technical issues with the drone. That's my understanding from public, okay. public act, act knowledge. Uh, Lieutenant Harold, if uh, cameras had been placed on the AGR roof, would that have helped mitigate the threat? That would have. Uh, where cameras. cameras, where the Secret Service didn't place any cameras to your knowledge, did they? Not aware of any cameras no. on the, on the, on the roof of the AGR building. There is about seven different ways the Secret Service could have secured that building. A 10-year-old looking at that satellite image could have seen that the greatest threat posed to the President that day outside the security perimeter was the AGR building and that roof. And a 20-year-old with a week's notice figured it out and outsmarted and outmaneuvered the entire U.S. Secret Service. And that is a shame and it's a stain on uh, their agency. And the best way to prevent these from happening is you don't react to them, you prevent them in the first place. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Powell. Ms. Wolhane, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us today. I want to join my colleagues in thanking you for your service. I, too, served uh, in the military, and so I'm enormously grateful for the safety and security that you provide all of us when we're home. My questions are going to be focusing primarily on communications and radio protocol. Um, and so I'm confident or somewhat confident that I know to whom to direct these. But if you have any insight or input into it, please feel free to chime in. Um, I want to start with Mr. Uh, Sergeant Lentz. Uh, understand that you are the, uh, the commander of the Butler County Emergency Services Unit. And as commander, my understanding is you were in the local command tra uh, trailer, along with your deputy commander and representatives from the Butler County Sheriff's Department and the Butler Township Police Department, uh, as well as, of course, the emergency services on that day. Uh, meanwhile, my understanding is that the Secret Service security room included representatives from the Secret Service, from the state police, and from the, also from the Butler County Emergency Services. Just to start, is that a fairly accurate uh, portrayal of who, who was where then? Yes. 
Perfect. Uh, can you describe then some of the radio frequencies that were used by those various agencies? And I'll start with the Butler Police Department. What frequencies were they operating under? Sure. So the uh, Butler Township Police Department was using uh, a channel we call PD Ops 3, which was uh, an operations channel just for the township units performing traffic control duties. 